Hello and welcome to the new playlist, Python Projects. So in my other two playlists, I have uh, explained how to develop a concept of Python and do introductory coding. And in another list, Python drills, I have shown 20 plus drills to solve practical problems by using Python coding. So if you have explored those playlists, now you're ready to make real world projects. In our projects, we will make small games like uh, tic-tac-toe and blackjack, and we will also deal a large set of data uh, so that we can get a gist of practical application. And we'll also try to uh, see how we can implement our coding to develop web applications. The resources will be found in my GitHub repository, and the platform remains the same. We will use Jupyter Notebook installed through Anaconda 3. In order to utilize the course uh, or the playlist, when you start writing code uh, for a project, think about the steps and fragment it into small pieces. And uh, if you can connect the code blocks for each steps uh, and uh, make a bug free and uh, with enhanced functionality and a clean code that can, uh, that can be understood by other people, uh, you can actually successfully develop a project and then uh, implement your knowledge simultaneously. If you get stuck in at any stage, at any stage, uh, you can see Python help or documentation, or you can recheck uh, your knowledge to see uh, which concept you need to uh, see through again. So let's start making Python projects. I'll see you in the next lecture uh, and start making our first project. Hello and welcome to the Python project one, tic-tac-toe game. Here we will make the simple game of tic-tac-toe and uh, it's kind of a hello world project. Many programmers start writing projects by uh, making this game. So in order to make the whole game, we have to segment the problem into small pieces. And uh, here you can see the small steps that it will take to write the whole game. In the first step, we want to see a representation of the board. That's why we will print a board and fix the coordinates. Let's say uh, in a tic-tac-toe game, there are nine squares, right? So uh, we will uh, mark these coordinates uh, with nine numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, starting from the lower left. And at step two, it will come to the players. Uh, we will uh, assign markers to players. Uh, let's say the first player will take X and the second player take zero or O, whatever uh, fits, so that we can distinguish one player's input from the other. And we'll also take the player input. Uh, uh, the first player will uh, give their input as X and the other player will give their input uh, as O. At Step three, we'll put a marker on the board uh, uh, just to check whether our assignment of coordinates is uh, working correctly. And uh, step four, uh, this is kind of a set of conditions, uh, the winning game conditions. We know that in tic-tac-toe, one player wins if they can put their inputs uh, in uh, diagonally, vertically, or horizontally. If uh, the three markers are in line, then we will uh, uh, set that as a game definition, as a winning condition. At step five, we will take uh, the player's input to see who goes first, and we will uh, take a random function uh, to assign the first, assign a marker to a first player or assign a, play, a marker to a second player, uh, just to uh, decide every time the game is played uh, which player. Uh, is supposed to go first. At step six, uh, we will have to check whether the game is still on. Let's say several players have submitted uh, their inputs and we have to check whether the game is still ongoing, whether the winning condition is not met yet and a space in the board is still available. And also we have to check whether the board is full. If the board is full, we will have to decide whether uh, player one or player two has uh, won or uh, the game is drawn. And also uh, at a step eight, we have to check against the player's input and uh, we have to check the board simultaneously. I will take a coordinate from the player, let's say 
uh, the player uh, in the game, uh, the player as an input will input X or O, and uh, we will ask in which coordinate you want to put your marker. Let's say he or she will uh, say number eight, then we'll put that marker in, the, uh, in that coordinate, but before that we'll check whether it's available or not. And at step nine, we'll check whether the game has ended. If it is ended, we will keep an option to play a game. Just a typo here. And at a step 10, this is the hardest part. Uh, we have to combine all the code blocks from step one to step nine. Uh, we'll uh, combine all these uh, fragments into one piece uh, by using loops and conditionals uh, to successfully run the game. So let's get started writing, writing the code. So in the first step, of our project, we have to print the board to fix the coordinates. So we have to fix the nine coordinates. Uh, starting from the upper row, uh, we'll uh, give, the, uh, we'll give them some names, coordinate seven, eight, nine. In the middle row, we'll give them uh, some name, uh, four, five, six. And at the lower row, we'll give them the names one, two, and three. So that's how we uh, set up the coordinates for all the, uh, uh, all the squares in the game. And uh, we have to uh, clear the board every time we show the board, otherwise our whole screen will be full with the representation uh, of the board. So each time we display the board, we actually want to remove the previous representation and we want to show only the latest representation. So for that, we have to, uh, we have to incorporate a clear output from ipython.display. Uh, So from this ipython.display module, we are importing clear output. That is uh, clearing all the outputs, uh, all the previous outputs and only keeping the latest one. So we are writing a function called display board, which will call the board and print the coordinates. For printing, we want to make it a little bit aesthetic. So let's say we show this board as this, just to show the sticks, uh, uh, the ranks and files that go inside the board. And for the first line, we have three coordinates, seven, eight, and nine. So let's say, we have three coordinates like this. We start with a space and the board seven and then a vertical line and then board eight, that is the eighth coordinate and then another vertical line and then board nine. So just a fraction of the uh, upper coordinates. And then we want to print another, so, uh, another set of spaces and then we want to divide uh, to, sh uh, to show how the row looks and then another set of vertical lines. So this we can actually, um, replicate for the middle row also. In the middle row, the, uh, the three coordinates will be four, five, and six. So it will call, uh, it will print the fourth, fifth, and sixth coordinates. And we can replicate this for uh, the lower row also. The three coordinates are one, two, and three. So as a whole, it will show the whole board. Let's see if we have any error here. And we should also test this. In order to test this, uh, we want to see We want to define a list containing all the coordinates of the board. And let's say if we call the if 
if we call this function display board with our test board the number of list whether it shows this as you can see that it shows the nine coordinates and uh, this is just a representative coordinate just to show whether the board works or not so that uh, that is kind of the first step to make the representation of the board. Now we have already made the representation of the board. Now let's go to the second step, assign markers to player and take player input. So we will assign two markers to the players. For the first player will be X and the second uh, player it will be O. Uh, to do this, we will uh, write a function called player input. And uh, to save the markers, we'll define an empty string. And we will uh, continue to keep the input from the player as long as they, uh, until they input X or O. So our condition will be the first condition is for X and the second condition is for O. So as long as they do not input X or O, we'll keep continuing uh, showing a prompt like input. Inside, we can ask a question like for the first player. Just to make things less complicated, we will convert it, uh, convert their input into uppercase so that it will always be uh, capital X or capital O. Let's say the first player wants to be X. Then we will set that as a first marker. Or it will be the opposite. Now let's see if there is any error in here. Let's say I input X. So it is returning X and O. So it's assigning first marker to X and the second marker to, uh, is assigning X to the first player, O to the second player. So that's how we, we're deciding who gets what marker. Now in step three, we have to put the markers uh, that we are, uh, we are taking from the players that we have actually to put them on the board. To do that, we are uh, we're writing a function called place marker. And as an argument, we'll pass three arguments, the board, the marker, and at what position we want to put that marker. So for that, let's see, in a specific position of the board, if we can place the marker. Let's see if there's any error. And then we want to test it. 
So we can test it with any uh, sign we want. We want to call this function with three arguments. Uh, as the board, we want to call the test board that earlier we have written, the test board, this condition, uh, the representation with nine coordinates. And uh, let's say at position five, we want to put a percent sign So it has already put that uh, put the percentage sign at coordinate five, that is at the very middle of the board. Uh, to display that, we want to call the display board function that we have earlier shown, display board with the test board, the test board representation. You can see that at coordinate five, at the very middle, one, two, three, four, five, uh, it has put a person. So that's how we can actually manipulate any coordinate in the board. Now at step four, we have to check the winning conditions for the game. So we have to check whether across the files and ranks and the diagonals, all the coordinates are the same. So we will write a bunch of Boolean conditions. The first condition will be we uh, will be we will will be checking whether the coordinates uh, across the top that is seven, eight, and nine are are the same. Then we will check across the middle that is uh, four, five, and six. Then we'll check across the bottom, that is one, two, and three. Then we'll check uh, down the middle, that becomes seven, four, and one. And also down the middle, eight, five, and two. Yeah, just a parenthesis here. And then we'll also have to check uh, down the right side, that is uh, nine, six, and three. And we have to check the two diagonals if we uh, consider from the right side and go down, that is seven, five, and three. And the last condition will be another diagonal. Uh, if we consider from the right side and go down, then it will be nine, five, and one. So these are all the game conditions that we can see. We're checking whether uh, the, all the three coordinates across the files and ranks and the diagonals are uh, the same or not. And if we consider against our test board that is uh, here. This is a winning condition. So if we check with this, uh, uh, this coordinates or this combination, it should return uh, true. So if we call the test board and in here actually you can see that the X is winning, so we'll test with X and it's returning true. So that's how we can check the winning conditions. At step five, we want to randomly decide who goes, uh, who goes first. So we'll import the random module. And then 
uh, we will write a function called choose first. And uh, we will uh, test it with two random integers. If zero is equal to zero. And then we'll return player two. Else, we will decide that player one will go first. So this is just a simple check to see who goes first randomly. Now at step six, we have to check whether the game is still on. The game will go on as long as there is a space in the board is available. Uh, to check this, we'll have to see, um, we'll have to write a function called space check. And uh, it will call both the board and the uh, position. And we'll have to write a Boolean condition. Return uh, board position. We will check with a coordinate and see whether it is equal to a uh, space that is whether it's uh, a space or not uh, now comes to step seven we have to check whether the game is ended the game in our case will only be ended when the board is full and no uh, space in the board is available so for that, we're writing a function called full board check, which, which will call the board, and we will uh, run a for loop. Remember that the upper bound is not included in for loop. <laughs> and we will uh, call the space check uh, that we have written in the uh, part six we will check against the board positions. That is, we will check against every coordinate in the board to see whether they are available or not. And we'll return false. And if this condition does not work, then we'll return true. So that's how we can check whether the game is ended or not. Uh, in other words, whether the board is full or not. Now, in the previous steps, we have actually checked whether the board is full or not, and whether the uh, whether the space in the board is available, whether the game is running or not. But in the actual game, we have to check it against the player's input. Uh, so the players will input their uh, intended coordinates like one, two, and three. And we have to check against their input whether that is uh, that is uh, available or not. And we have to check uh, in every step whether the board is full. So we are writing a function called player choice, which will call the board. And we'll start with an initial position zero. And we have to write a for loop for uh, checking against the player's input. There are nine possible coordinates, so uh, seven and nine, or uh, so these are the possible coordinates that the players can input, or if our uh, space check against the board at particular position are not included, then 
will keep asking the player uh, to give an input. Let's say, choose your next position. one to nine so they have to they are forced to uh, give an input uh, in this range and at the end we'll return that position so that's how we are actually taking the player's input and uh, checking against uh, the board and the position whether that's a true uh, whether that's a viable position or not So at step nine, this is kind of an optional step. Uh, let's say if the game has actually ended, we want to give the players an option to play again. So uh, we're writing a function called uh, replay. And we'll take an input from the player whether they want to play again or not. So let's say, do you want to play again? And uh, whatever input they give, dot lower. And we will check uh, starts with whether their input starts with Y or not. And if this is true, then we will give them an option to play again. So in the earlier nine steps, we have actually fragmented the whole problem, the whole gaming project into nine small steps. And now in step 10, the final step, we have to combine the code blocks to actually run the game. So just as a quick flashback, uh, in step one, we have printed a board and fixed the coordinates to make a representation of the board. And we have also made a test board and in step two, we have assigned markers X and O to the players. And uh, in step three, we have tested whether we can actually uh, put the marker on the board. Uh, and uh, we have tested with a random uh, variable or a symbol. And we have written the game conditions in step four. And uh, at a step five, we have decided who goes first uh, by using a random module. And at step six, we have checked whether the game is still on by checking whether there is space on the board. Uh, at step seven, we have checked whether the game is ended by um, seeing whether the board is full. And uh, at step eight, we have checked against the player's input and we have uh, checked whether that is possible to put the player's input in the intended coordinate. At a step nine, we have given an option to the player after the game is ended uh, to see whether they want to play or not. So at step 10, we'll start with a greeting like uh, a tic-tac-toe game. And we'll start by resetting the board and we will try to distinguish between the inputs of the players. Uh, so that basically we'll write two blocks of code, two main blocks of code from player one and player two. So let's start with resetting the board. We'll just uh, make a bunch of uh, empty space. Let's call it the board. And we'll take player input. Player one marker and uh, player two marker. And this is actually will be, let's say by default, the game uh, will be running. Player two, 
marker and uh, equal to so we will take players input and then we'll uh, define another variable called turn by using the choose first that we have uh, defined earlier and then by taking that input we'll uh, print something like turn plus go first just to let them know which player is going first and then play game just to make sure they're ready to play okay input and then inside we'll start and conditional and uh, if they answer yes then the game will be on if their input that is the first character of their input is equal to y then the game will be on else the game on will be false that is game will not be on and let's say by default the game is on so we will write the first block of code for the player once turn let's say player one Uh, first, we will display the board. The board. The representation that we have made earlier. I will start by di uh, displaying that. And then we have to decide on the position. which will come from the player's choice and we'll call the board again. And then we have to place the marker. Uh, for the marker, we have to give three arguments. One will be the board. That is the representation, the player wants marker. and the position, at which position they want to put the marker. And then uh, we have to check against the winning condition, whether they have won or not. For the win check, we have to give two arguments. One will be the board and another will be the marker. And inside the condition, we have to display the board. Uh, and then if they have one, then we have to print. Congrats, you won. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And then uh, the game will no longer be on if someone uh, has already won. Game one will be false 
or else and uh, we have otherwise the board could be full full board check we'll check against the current representation of the board and then display the board um, the board and if no one has owned then definitely it's a draw game drone we'll give just a message and then we'll break out of the loop or uh, the turn will no longer be for player one and we'll go to uh, player two two. So we have written the uh, code block for the turn for the first player. And uh, it is actually inside a while loop. And uh, we have to uh, repeat this uh, coding again for the second turn, that is for the player two's turn. And uh, we have to write okay. If the turn equal to let's say we are playing for player one. Then I have to put all this block. Then I'm just uh, indenting all these things right. All right, so the whole uh, code block is for the player one. Just to make sure we understand this portion. And we have to repeat this again for player two. Uh, we have checked whether this, uh, whether we're under in player one's turn and we have checked the winning conditions and the drawing conditions. We have to do the same thing under the players, uh, under the second player's turn. Else, um, just to make sure player two and this is uh, player two's turn and we do the same thing again it's the same thing just with the second player's conditions we place the second player's marker and we check against that player uh, two's marker and if he or she has won we print that, that message and otherwise the game is a draw and uh, we break out, the out of the loop or else we turn to player one again. And uh, let's say we have finished all of these, then we will, let's say, if no one wants to play again, if not replay, then we'll break out the loop. This is actually will be intended with the while loop outside this while loop while the game is on. So let's see if turn uh, 
is equal to uh, so uh, just to make sure we have combined everything correctly uh, we have printed a greetings and while the game is by default uh, playing uh, we have taken the markers and we have decided who will go first and uh, then uh, if they want to play the game and the game is on and uh, if the turn is for player one we check against the game winning or game drawing conditions or else we do the same for player two and if they do not play uh, they do not want to play again we just uh, break out of break out of the loop and so when we start the game it's printing the greeting and uh, it's asking player one do you want to be x or o let's say i want to be x so ready to play yes or no let's say yes so it's asking me to choose the position let's start with the middle five choose your next position uh, i'm trying one next uh, it's asking me for a position again let's say three just to finish the game quickly um, then it's asking me again it's two and if i want to win then i have to put seven then it has showing uh, it has shown that player two has won and it uh it is saying do we want to play again enter yes and no let's say no so that's how we have actually combined all the uh, small steps that we have written earlier to run this game and we have combined in this step everything together to run this game so uh, if you have followed through this far congratulations you have made your first project in python i'll see you in the next project